Okay, quick idea card opening video, especially after kind of being shocked at my uh, the length of my last video, almost three hours long. I can't believe it. It's like the the length of uh, like a Lord of the Rings movie, except that it's just a uh, half page uh, stamp scene. Those videos. Uh, that scene took a long time just because, uh, I don't know, I, I hadn't done the composition at all before, and there were a lot of different considerations. Anyways, these idea cards are of reorders, or reorder, reorders of uh, some scenes that uh, we've had in the past, but I just haven't had in a while. But uh, the uh, river right here, and some kind of iridescent uh, types of uh, color schemes in here. This one's really about kind of just some soft light in here and uh, reflecting a lot of that light off that sand in there. So um, kind of, you know, uh, I don't know how many, maybe two different kind of general zones of color greens down here in the foreground and uh, in these bushes here. But then you have the sand here. But for me, kind of reiterating what's going on in the uh, the colors of the sky and water are important to add into um, some areas that would be kind of a uh, representative of a uh, kind of a, of a reflective surface meaning kind of that bank there I know I could have done it a little bit less pink than uh, that but I don't know I thought it looked pretty good in terms of the uh, creating continuity between these uh, different areas and there's even some pink in that green in there so um, sometimes when you do things um, and you see areas kind of as completely distinctive um, color schemes and you do it that way it can make the scene look a little bit fragmented so bringing those colors into um, the other areas um, really helps to tie everything together um, let's see what we have here. You might see the uh, Vista print uh, ads on TV. Okay, this is a scene done by, uh, let me see here, I kind of forgot, Linda Standart. Really simple um, composition here, um, but quite elegant. I believe these trees were stamped in either an iridescent ink. I don't think they were embossed, but they might have been. If they were, they were done in a highly detailed embossing. But um, let me see. I, actually, it was done on a plain, black, plain, untextured cardstock. And they used perfect medium from Ranger for the best effect, but you can also use a uh, good quality watermark ink. And, uh, oh, let me see. Stamp the 196F, which is the pine tree. This is one pine tree stamp four times. Uh, once to the left of that tree and twice to the right, brush with perfect pearls forever green. All right, uh, perfect pearls forever green. Kind of a really cool effect though, isn't it? Uh, of course, this is just a, postcard, so, you know, a printed replication, but um, how close that is to the original, I don't know, but uh, even the, the rep, you know, the uh, replication I thought looked pretty cool, and uh, I'm guessing it's pretty indicative of the, uh, you know, a as much as a reproduction can be um, true to form in terms of uh, uh, the colors and whatnot. Okay, the Aurora Borealis. Um, I did this one as a lesson. I'm not sure if this one was the one that was done as a, as a lesson. I think this one was done before, um, before I even had the video channel. So, um, a lot of greens in here, and that slightly off color up there is brown. It's the Marvy number six brown. I, I find that when I just do only green. Sometimes it's a little bit too kind of electric and hot, so bringing some of that in there kind of mellows some of the green out and, uh, I don't know, makes it a little bit more earthy or whatnot, and, I don't know, kind of grounded, I would say, so. Um, and then black has been also been used up here, but this is, I love doing that type.
type of scene, uh, you know, Northern Lights type of uh, image. And uh, I need to do some more of that. I need to do some uh, different shapes and uh, whatnot of the uh, Northern Lights. I've never seen them in person. I'm, I'm really going to have to see them at some point in time. Okay, this is uh, from Susan Chen in Taiwan. Really great use of the oak trees in the background. Then she sponged in some fall colors in here. Um, I'm guessing that's pigment ink kind of swept through there, kind of like that, you know, and applied in here, giving it a really nice atmosphere, you know, it kind of mellows things out a little bit. Sometimes it, it would just be a little bit too crisp, and by bringing in that um, pigment ink, I'm guessing that's what it is, uh, that white pigment ink, it kind of brings in that um, hue that's also so prominent in the sky and in the water, so it kind of um, unifies the uh, the objects from um, I don't know the different uh, surfaces here and background. Okay, they must have listened to uh, their customers. They didn't use to shrink wrap these, so sometimes you get a big box of these and a lot of them would be broken open and you'd have uh, postcards just all over the place, dented and everything like that. Sometimes there wasn't any packing material, but they pack better now. Um, scenic sentiment quotes, you know. I think this scene would look fine without the quote, but um, that quote in there adds kind of a sense of, uh, I don't know, kind of a dynamic element to uh, the scene, and this is one instance where I really left a, a large background area in there. I Normally I would close in the clouds or to have something else in there, but knowing that I was going to stamp um, that quote in there, I just left that big kind of uh, plain opening in there. But um, I don't know, those quotes and uh, quote uh, sheets are fun to use. You can kind of do it both ways, but um, if you know you're going to stamp the quote directly into the scene, it's just best to kind of plan around a quote. Okay, Peggy Lee here from Taiwan, another kind of cool scene, and here's another one of the scenic sentiment quotes, but I like all this texture in there. It's all the grass texture stamped multiple times in here. Look at that cool little kind of autumn foliage and uh, a really effective use of the uh, crooked limb here, kind of uh, framing the scene off and uh, kind of giving continuity between the uh, that buck, the quote, and uh, the foreground, having those elements in there, black, you know. If you didn't have uh, these in here as black and the quote, you know, that buck would kind of be, it wouldn't I don't know, it doesn't seem like it would uh, be... It wouldn't look natural in that scene um, from a value perspective. Okay, it's, it would be too dark. So unifying it with some uh, foreground elements, including the uh, quote stamp, was important in there. This is a scene that I did for this um, website out there there. Um, I don't think I mentioned the website in the back here, but uh, this lesson that I did, it was a step-by-step -step lesson in terms of a, a bunch of uh, uh, progressions on this, but what it was about was, um, I think it was called the value of value or something like that, where it talks about kind of oscillating your light sources. Okay, a lot of people, like in a cabin like this, they might just color the whole thing brown and not leave things like the, the vertical surfaces a little bit lighter, giving more of a three-dimensional edge to it. Something like this down here, if someone colors in all the grass, then that, you know, the uh, subject matter down there wouldn't stand out as much. It's like a spotlight. And then just having some, a little bit of variation up here on these mountains like that helps the mountain to seem a little bit more uh, three-dimensional by creating shadows on some areas and leaving some kind of lighter or even almost the white of the paper. So 
that was um, an example of value and uh, oscillating the lights and darks in all areas. We have it in the background, sky, we have lights and darks, we have the mountain, lights and darks, lights and darks on the cabin, lights and darks in the meadow, okay? I mentioned this in a previous video, uh, <laughs> postcard opening. This is like a, I don't know, the only thing I have going, uh, in terms of, uh, the feeling of opening, um, kind of a package of, uh, you know, colored prints like we used to get, you know, with, uh, film photography. This is Anna Corinne, uh, Evaldson, really great artist from Sweden and previously from South Africa, but um, really fantastic use of the uh, these flower elements, and she embossed them down here in different colors. Uh, from a, I think it's nature, one of the nature sets, one through four, I can't remember which one it was in. Um, I think it's nature set number four, yeah. Nature set number four, but all these little textures down here, and she used those really effectively. And check out her blog sometime. We have uh, links to her from uh, the website as well. But uh, really fantastic uh, stamper. I've got more, more of a selection than I remember ordering. Waterfalls. I always like uh, doing waterfalls like this. These days I would probably uh, splatter a little bit of uh, opaque or uh, bleed proof white down at the base here, but um, same type of things, oscillating your lights and darks. When I'm doing water, I like to leave the water light, okay? It doesn't mean I don't have any color in there. I have like, you know, light blues in here or whatnot. If you're doing it in the sunset or something like that, you know, have a little bit of yellows or something like that. But just to make these stand out, you just take, take the areas around them and make them darker, okay? So, um, I don't know, just a kind of fun waterfall scene. That's using a couple different waterfalls. That was the, uh, the Gushing Falls Large and Side Falls Large. Okay, Anna Karen again. Really fantastic winter scene. But look at that texture going on down there from that, uh, uh, I think it's the winter brush, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, really great use of everything. Look at the textures running in here, and it it kind of has an antique look, almost like an antique color look to it, you know? Kind of a, a it's almost like a graded, um, color scheme, but you just winter down here. It almost kind of just blends in, right? Because it's almost the same shape as the winter brush stamp in there. But um, yeah, here's her, her link down here on the postcard. Um, I know I didn't hold that out long enough, but uh, you can find it on our website. Or I'll just say it, it's layersofink.blogspot.com, okay? And kind of my shimmering trees. This is called, yeah, Shimmering in Green. It uses a lot of the um, shagbark hickory trees, um, or not a lot of them, both of them, I should say. There's the smaller version and the larger version in here. And this is one where, kind of as early on in my kind of experimental days of using the uh, color box uh, white pigment ink to create kind of a foggy, misty uh, effect. And that's when I kind of figured out that, um, what, you know, instead of just applying a ton of that um, color box ink, which I still do, you know, when I was trying to lighten some areas up, um, at this stage and kind of my 
learning curve, I figured out, okay, instead of having to use so much of that pigment ink to create kind of a translucent, kind of airy looking image, maybe I just won't stamp all of it out, meaning I wiped off a lot of the uh, ink off of some of these background trees before I stamped it out. So I wouldn't have to use so much pigment ink. I don't know, I'm a slow learner. But um, you can really see that uh, pigment ink down there kind of creating that fog and uh, kind of a, uh, I don't know, it creates the lighting in here. I mean, just the composition alone looked okay, but it's really when you add in that uh, pigment ink and uh, a lot of those little touches with the uh, gel pen that I feel that the, uh, the scene really gets its, uh, I don't know, kind of its essence, okay? and uh, kind of becomes what it's all about. I mean, we spent all this time stamping and all these things and coloring trees and all that, but then if you do something like that with the white pigment ink in there, it really becomes more about that white pigment ink than anything else. But uh, I don't know, fun stuff. Um, little foliage things in the foreground. This is kind of similar to um, some of the things I was doing on my last scene here, um, you know, with a lot of the uh, pigment ink. I was looking at this scene, I, and I did the video, I'm not going to uh, do another section of it, but I think I'm going to add more pigment ink in some of these areas right in here. But even, you can see that little, um, let's see if I can focus in here, see that little foliage stamp right here, and right in here, it's the same foliage stamp as uh, right here, there, you can see it right there. Uh, so, anyways, um, let's see, when was this one done? This one was stamped. Uh, I don't have a date. Uh, I can't remember when it was, but uh, anyway, I hadn't ordered that postcard in a while, so we'll send those out with the orders as far as some idea cards and uh, people can get, I don't know, a reference as far as some color schemes and some compositional ideas from these uh, idea cards. And um, that's one of the beautiful things about digital printing these days is I can order 50 or 100 of one card like that. Back in the days before digital printing, if you wanted to get a postcard at a reasonable rate per piece, you really had to order like 3,000 of them or something like that at one time. So something that we never really did, but now, I don't know, there's all kinds of benefits of uh, the digital age. I don't know, some things are gone, but uh, other things like that make it really nice for uh, for us stampers, including uh, this YouTube channel. So anyways, uh, some new idea cards there, ready to go out. And uh, thanks for uh, watching this, uh, I don't know, postcard opening video.